All right, good evening, everybody. I'll bring this order, this meeting to order, 7.30 p.m. Resolve that the agenda for the June 2nd, 2020 regular meeting of council be approved. Moved by Councilor uh, uh, White, second by Councilor Tony. All favor? Opposed? It's carried. Sorry, sorry, just before we... I thought we'd have a minute there just in the agenda if or yeah in the agenda if we could add a couple items I have actually three items that we need that need to be added to the in-camera session um, one is tourism another one is um, a hiring of an employee and then one with personnel okay been noted thank you Did you add those? Okay, thank you. Result of the minutes of the May 19th, 2020 regular meeting, council meeting and the May 12th and 26th, 2020 committee of the whole meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Wintoni. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, so moving down to 6.1. <clears throat> Result of the RCMP municipal reporting, Swan River provided for the fiscal year quarter of January 1st to March 31st, 2020, be received as information. It's moved by Councilor Antoni, second by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.2. Oh, we don't have anything there. 6.2. There we are. Result of the municip municipal policing agreement invoice from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police for the period January 1st to March 31st, 2020, be received as information. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor, uh, Councillor uh, Gray. I, I trust, just for the record, every, everyone knows, so it's going live, that the difference is, I, I think we, we were $30,000 less, 26000 or something like that, than last year. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.3. Here. I'm, I'm that, so. Pardon? If you're talking about it being already passed, I, I'm moving it up one because I, I got it wrong. You're moving it? Yeah. Okay. Because we, we, that um, had been already approved, right? We received that at our last meeting? Yes, it was received, but you wanted to know what was going to be happening or what right, okay. our recommendation was? Right, so on, on this here, because we had a letter from the minister, Mr. Squires, uh, in regards to, um, I guess, uh, our bylaws enforcement on issues that are related to COVID and to, um, items where people are violating or if it's individual stores or so on um, what uh, what we would do and so I was asking the, the uh, Mr. Kroll about uh, what we're doing moving forward with that. So I discussed that with our uh, CAO group that has been formed uh, through the uh, Municipal Administrators Association and uh, in discussion it's uh, the consensus is most towns are leaving that to the province um, they, most towns, including Dauphin, are, uh, see that as a uh, provincial jurisdiction that the town shouldn't need to be in. Um, and our, our jurisdiction really only goes to uh, properties that we own, which we are tacitly enforcing at this point anyway, where uh, if people are, are congregating too close together, say at uh, the arena or anything like that, we would we would let them know that we would be six feet apart. So, right. so, so we are 
enforcing, but not by rule of law, but by, by generally, because we own the establishment, really. Um, and that power that the province has given us is only extends to our own property, our sidewalks, our parks, things like that, no businesses or anything. Good point. So, yeah. so is there any questions or comments on that? Because I know that we kind of breezed through that at the last meeting, so I was, that's why I was kind of wondering where that was going, but I think that Mr. Kroll has explained that pretty well, especially considering the other municipalities are pretty much following what you had just mentioned. Uh, Councillor uh, Morio. Um, we're on 6.3, correct? A uh, letter from Municipal Relations? Yes. Which is dealing with our operating grant and not bylaw enforcement. Oh, did that move? Yeah, it did. I'm sorry, there was a question that came from the uh, mayor earlier in the week about what we were going to do about the Minister of Municipal Relations letter that came last week. I apologize for speaking on the wrong topic. <laughs> hey, no problem. I, I, I was following you. I just uh, wasn't the topic that was on the agenda. This, this actually changed here. So anyway, let's move on and we'll read the, uh, the resolution. Resolved that the letter from the Minister of Municipal Relations dated May the 12th, 2020, regarding 2020 municipal operating grants be received as information. Moved by... Didn't, didn't we already do that? No. Last time? That was last week. <coughs> Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Result of the email from tax service dated May 15, 2020, advising that the Minister of Municipal Relations has suspended all tax proceedings until September the 21st, 2020, be received as information. Moved by Councilman Tony, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Councillor Gray, we can't see your video. Sorry. No problem. <clears throat> Resolved that the email dated May 15, 2020, from Pasco Harding Company Chartered Professional Accountants, forwarding an email received from the Municipal Relations regarding one month extensions of key legislative deadlines be received as information. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.6. .6. Resolved that the building permits 1520 through 3320 with a total estimated value of $253,960 be received. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Uh, Mr. Poole, um, just looking at the, the listing in that, do we notice that there's a trend on the uh, increase in both in fence building permits lately? You mean like in the number of fences or are you talking yeah. in revenue? No, the number of fences that people are constructing around their properties. Uh, I don't have the, the past numbers in front of me, so I know Ron hasn't mentioned anything to me, but uh, we can look into that number for you. Perfect. Yeah, because it seems like there's a lot of fences that are being asked for in a little bit, and I'm just wondering uh, if that's a correlation between uh, an effort of people trying to protect their properties from backyard vandalism and things like that right so i just want i would just like to see if there's a correlation of between that because i um yeah we can take a look i can provide that to council okay I thanks i i actually have the same thought when i was looking over the building permits and I thought, man is there ever a lot of fence building going on council white we you can certainly tell us the numbers uh, mr pool but 
unless we interviewed the individuals building the, the fences, how would you know why they built the fence? I guess I'm, I don't think we could go, or I wouldn't want to go that far, but if, if no, council no. wants us to, we can arrange that. But uh, I think first we can take a look at the numbers and go from there. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.1. Result that the director for public works report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor and Tony. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, Mr. Poole, um, looking in the report, did the new garbage truck arrive today? Uh, yes, it came in this afternoon. Okay, perfect. Councillor Gray? Yes, Your Worship. Um, uh, three things. Um, the first is that um, I've had a number of questions from people about garbage pickup. We have a, a, a half ton trailing our garbage truck. What was that about? Uh, that's a COVID-19 measure. Uh, basically, the regular or typical, those guys would uh, travel three in the cab. So obviously, to, to keep with physical separation standards that we passed, uh, the, either the option was that they stand on the back of the truck, you know, when they're when they're when they're lifting average forty pounds several hundred times a day, uh, and being on the back of the truck, it's extremely strenuous on their arms. So we okay. to give to give them a break, uh, we have that truck pulling them until our our physical distancing requirements ease up. Excellent answer. I just was asked and didn't know. Secondly, and this is a recurring question every time of this year, you can guess what's coming. I'm guessing. Is there anything we're going to be able to do about dandelions or are we going to, uh, maybe that's an issue for council in terms of addressing the uh, regulations uh, that were passed a number of years ago because um, too numerous to mention are the people who are concerned about the fact that the town's properties and the egg society's property and so on are the biggest contributors to the dandelion problem in town and other weeds too but dandelions in particular right now other weeds are coming yeah that's it's no doubt one of our largest complaints in the spring and throughout summer uh we are researching a, a, a chemical uh, with the province to see if it is on the banned list. Uh, I don't know what the results of that yet. I'd have to discuss with Darren and see how far he got with that, but uh, I can keep council updated. Can you please, uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, perhaps we can put it on a future agenda, maybe for a committee of the whole, so that we can talk about it. Certainly when we're planning for the, for the um, uh, AMM meetings because it, it seems to me that we can't be the only municipality that's going to be concerned about this. In fact, I know we're not. So, um, the third thing is, and uh, Mr. Mayor, I don't know, um, I, I think you've had discussions with the Vice President of the Northwest Media Council about upcoming um, flags. Yes. Uh, as, uh, uh, are you going to be addressing that? Should we address it now with Mr. Poole in terms of, um, okay. Yes. I was going to actually do that in my report, so. Okay, well, I was too, so. Um, anyway, I just wanted to make sure we had the staff to put it up for, if we get the flags for June 21st, if we'll have the staff. That's what I wanted to do, but we can do it with the, Mr. Poole later or now. Well, we can do it now. Okay. So, uh, I, do you have copies of the flags? I, I should have them by now. Mm -hmm. Come through. Uh, the, the flags themselves? Yeah. No. You know what they look like? No. She, oh. she, well, I know what they look like, but um, she had just phoned me this evening, actually, prior to the meeting uh, with Chartrand, and was requesting if the town would consider uh, putting up the Métis flag on the Manitoba um, birthday celebration date, actually, for, what is that, June the 21st, I believe it is? July, July 12th. July 21st, yeah. June 21st is, is National Aboriginal Day, um, Aboriginal Persons Day, and so um, it would, that's, we were, the question was, could we do it on that day as well as June, July 12th, or through that period of time? Right, she asked July months. the 12th, yes. She, where, where, sorry, go ahead. She, she will provide the flags to us. 
we would just have to um, obviously convert some of the um, pools that we have temporarily or plan however we want to do. I'm, I'm not too sure, but maybe that's something that we can discuss, but I'm certainly not against it, that's for sure. Yeah, we, yeah, if she's for riding the flag, we can, we can put them up. Uh, I would need to know numbers, and then we can, we can work on the locations, and away we go. Okay, I, don't think, so, I don't think it'll be a big deal. What does the rest of council um, feel? Oh, shit. Go for it. Council Morio. Councilor Latoni. Okay. All right, so I think that we have um, overwhelming. How many, how many flags could we accommodate? Because um, she's ordering them tomorrow, I think. Yeah. Oh, I used to have those numbers. I know I did a count last year. I, I just, I don't have the numbers with me, but I can, uh, I have uh, Ms. Chartrand's number. I can text her the number. Perfect. If you can text her the number, give them to me and we can get them to her. I've sent everybody in council what the flags are expected to look like, and as well the chief administrative officer, uh, deputy chief, or assistant chief administrative officer, and Mr. Cool. So you should have it in your email now. Okay, thank They're you. quite spectacular, really. And so the request, I think, for the immediate term was June 21st, if we get them in time, July 12th, and then there are a couple of other dates through the year. Okay, perfect. Uh, Councillor Wintoni. Um, a few questions, but addressing the first one that Councillor Gray made, um, and if you see the email that was sent out, those look an awful lot like uh, the flags that were to be going up with the SVRSS um, and the grad committee. So I would hate for us to say yes to two organizations and perhaps be in, in trouble unless, unless this is something different. But from the images I see, I think that's exactly what we've already, maybe we haven't um, agreed to, but I was under the impression that we did. And those were the brackets that we've already should have ordered Mr. Poole and I'm assuming might already be here. Okay, I haven't got the email yet to see, but I I was under the impression we were talking about flags, not the not the banners. I it is it is banners. The that the e the email that I just got from Mr. Gray or Councillor Gray um, is the same banners that we have already I'm assuming we have um, talked about with the SVRSS. Yeah. Yeah, then we we will have an issue. Uh, we we have all of our banner posts plus an extra 15 uh, that we've had to order brackets and uh, and uh, uh, the, the basically what the banner is tied to. Uh, we have those already spoken for. And I gave the thumbs up, assuming that it was actual flags, like the a, a standard flag, not the banner. So um, I think that we need to look at that further at some point. I do have more questions, though, um, and most of them are directed to Mr. Poole, of course. So let's um, just hold off on there on, on the flag thing first before you go on to your next items. Uh, I'll okay. speak with I'll speak with Ms. Chartrand. She when she phoned and mentioned it to me. She wasn't saying banner, she was saying flag, so I, I'm not too sure about that. So we will need to have some clarification. So I'll chat with her after the meeting because she wanted me to call her after the meeting was done. Okay. Okay. No, that's, that sounds good. I just don't want to don't want to promise two people the same thing. Yeah, no, that's a good point. So, um, yeah, you can continue then. All right. Third Avenue South project um, drafting. Are we close to that or is it just a, a draft at this point, Mr. Poole? Uh, honestly, I, I was meaning to get that done before I went on vacation, but uh, it, it'll, it'll take me 20 minutes to, to finish up uh, my draft and send it off uh, to the buyer. And he's anxiously waiting for it so I can get that done tomorrow. 
Okay, no worries. And then you made reference to um, changes to zoning, re-tower heights. Um, what what does that refer to? I'm not sure. I don't know what tower heights is. We we just had a request uh, uh, from a residential property who wants to install uh, a tower for internet use. Oh. So. There were, there were some tricky situations, a lot of gray areas with our zoning bylaw in regards to to antennas, radio towers, internet towers, all of that in one. So I'm just drafting up some changes to run by Ron and then we'll present to council uh, and the reasons for it. Are there any um, regulations or restrictions with that and the proximity of the airport that we have? Uh, there is, but only to a certain height. So the the person has already gone through uh, his permitting process with Industry Canada, and as long as he satisfies the town of Swanover's zoning bylaw, he's good to go. Okay. And then my last two items, dandelions, and this is kind of for Mr. Gray as well. I did provide Mr. Harvey with, um, and yourself, Mr. Poole, with a, a chemical that appears to be approved for um, dandelions within the province. So I'm looking forward to see um, our results and hopefully we can have that advertisement going out and, and we can treat some of our dandelions in this community. And my final one is the lagoon. I see we're having, um, you make reference to having some difficulties there. What does that look for us? Are we in a state where we need to be worried? No, no, it's not. It's The lagoon isn't high in our freeboard. There's still lots of storage space. Uh, we have adequate storage to last uh, uh, quite some time. It's just we're we're having a little bit of trouble meeting our one milligram per liter phosphorus regulation right now. After two applications of our ferric uh, sulfate, so we will be applying a third this week, and hopefully we get some good results. Okay. All right. For the that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. For the discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 721 resolved that the April 2020 Swan River Handy Transit Van report be received as information. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Lentoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <clears throat> Council reports. We'll start with Councillor Morio. Um, this two week period, I didn't have uh, any meetings, but uh, I was just uh, wondering if the mayor or um, the town office could uh, send a letter of appreciation to Babcock Canada um, for uh, strategically uh, locating their uh, water bobber tanker group here in Swan River. Uh, it's definitely uh, providing a, a critical resources to the area around. Um, along with uh, pur purchasing a significant, uh, significant amount of uh, jet uh, fuel here and using our local restaurants and housing uh, hotels. So um, at this time of need when uh, they're all struggling. So um, I know uh, Swan River is not normally a, a tanker base, but they're strategically placed here and they go out almost every day. So um, I think it's uh, worthwhile that we reach out to them um, as a private enterprise, um, using our community as a, a staging point for their uh, bomber crew under the contract with Manitoba. That's a good idea. Thank you. We'll do that. Okay. You're done? Yep. Okay. Councillor Gray. Um, I haven't had any public meetings. I've been working um, on recreation. I think we need to have a committee of the whole meeting on recreation now that we're on our own. I'm going to suggest something in the July sessions. Um, and so I leave to you, Your Worship, which one you set for that. Um, the other thing that we uh, had talked about doing, and, and I don't know if it's coming up, but we have to spend some time on our, by, our, our, our building bylaw um, and I think perhaps later, even in the year, perhaps in August or something, we should do that. 
Um, so those are the two things that are uh, most pressing in terms of what I think we need to do and I've been working on. That's it? Okay. You have a question to that? I have a question uh, in regards to Councillor Gray's comments. You mentioned building bylaw, and I know some time ago, zoning bylaw. I, I just zoning, that's what I meant. Okay. okay, that's what I thought you meant, but I didn't want to assume. No. Nope. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Matoni. Um, I've had several meetings. I was uh, attempt at, I attended um, two meetings with the ministers and the Chamber of Commerce in terms of COVID-19 and opening for phase two. Um, I, we had a, a RISE meeting uh, that Mr. Gray was involved with, Councillor Gray as well, um, a business consortium meeting and a business uh, consortium meeting, which is a subcommittee from that one. Uh, we had our committee of a whole meeting as well as a chamber of commerce meeting in that as well. Um, so a few meetings, um, our community has, we are in phase two of COVID-19. So, um, and, um, yeah, um, following those, it's not a, not a, place for us to let up on on some of the rules and regulations that we have so um, continuing the efforts with the public and with your businesses is um, an effort that's ongoing and we thank the community for all of their efforts and and we appreciate them and then of course i've got um a few things to address in our in-camera session and if somebody or anybody could just give me an update or refresh my memory um, with the pool and the opening date that we have slated for September um, that'd be very much obliged I thought I had something in my notes and I can't seem to to find it so if Councillor Gray you have a moment at some point you can enlighten me what is the other than, well, other than that, that's all I have. Okay. Um, what's the date that we had selected? Okay, it's September the 1st. September the 1st. Yeah. Right. And, and that just, assumes... Go ahead. Go ahead, Councilor Gray. That assumes that we're, we've got all of the repairs we wanted to do, or some of them, the most of them, ready. Um, and that's why I think we need to talk in terms of recreation um, committee of the whole meeting sometime in July to make sure we're ready for that. Uh, Councilor Antonio, something else? So I guess just the question for the general public as well, um, who may have missed it either, who may have missed it, our, our opening date for the pool is scheduled for September 2nd. The reason that we are closed is not only with COVID-19, but um, to do repairs to the pool, correct? Correct. We were scheduling, um, yes, to repairs and studies. I don't know if they've got those plans in place. Uh, administration may know that there were two other reasons um, one was um, we have the period from in Swan River the period from mid-June until July September 1st is incredibly slow for the pool and so in this year because of and you'll recall we re amended our budget and that was part of the reason um, and um, we also need some time to get ourselves in place for all of the extra restrictions with respect to COVID. so it's all of those things together Thank you. Councillor Delorier. And I, I guess this uh, subsequent to uh, Councillor Tony's comments, but uh, for administration, uh, we're, we'd be safe in assuming there's no uh, September shutdown. This is in place of the September shutdown? Right. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, Councillor Watoli, you're done? I am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Friesen. Um, I had a call from Mary from Manitoba Age Friendly, and uh, I'll probably be looking into getting some people together to discuss that later on in the fall. Um, Communities of Care had a Zoom meeting. Communities in Bloom was busy trying not to get blown away yesterday to plant flowers, so we put it off till this morning. It went much better. And I've asked Mr. Poole to pass along kudos to uh, his foreman and to Hugh from the arena. They have been very, very vigilant in getting water going for us and tilling up the gardens. Um, attended the cow meeting, 
I also want to give out kudos to all the businesses for the social distancing that everyone is uh, partaking in. Uh, no complaining from anybody that I have seen, so that's great. Everybody understands. The gardens at the pool, I guess I, this is a question. Do you know if they're up for dibs or? It was, there's an old, uh, that went out in the paper, and I think also on social media, okay, inviting people to apply for a, a plot. To Amanda? Uh, to Brenton. Yeah. To Brenton. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Councillor White. Well, it's been fairly busy. I think we're meeting, nearly meeting bi weekly with PMH relative to COVID, and I echo uh, Councillor. Uh, with Tony's comments, I think the worst thing we could do now is become complacent in phase two. The social distancing and washing regularly is, are really simple things to do. And if we relax, we will potentially have a second wave. So I really encourage uh, the community to practice that social distancing. That's very important. At a medical service meeting, uh, we're looking at the plans for the future. Where should we go? How do we go? And a wonderful team to work with. Uh, cow. We met at the cow meeting, committee of the whole, and we talked about things like shared services. And the mayor and I have been meeting uh, irregularly, looking at uh, medical professional recruiting. What would be the protocols? What would be the priorities? So I, I compliment uh, your worship for working hard and trying to make that happen. So thank you, sir, for that. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Delorier. Nothing to report. Okay. <clears throat> For myself, uh, not too much of that's already been mentioned, but uh, I did have the honor last Friday to meet with the MMF president, uh, David Chartrand, and also uh, Northwest Lady Council Vice President, uh, Francis Chartrand and Dauphin while I was there. So I had a nice uh, sit down with them. Some of the items that we discussed will be discussed in camera tonight, but uh, they did uh, kind of go over some of the things, the initiatives that they've been working on uh, through this region especially uh, during the COVID crisis and, and the work they've done with helping, you know, first they were working with helping um, elders and, and Métis elders in the community and, and with hampers and so on and now they have expanded that to even more people that, uh, that can apply for help if they, they need during this, during this time. So they have one large center set up in Dauphin that I had a chance to uh, go see what the whole process was like and and we have the one here so kudos to uh to them for the hard work that they've been working on in our communities in, in this whole region so and also i'd like to recognize the fact that june is national indigenous history month so i uh, wish everybody to encourage or encourage everybody to go out and study and, and learn a bit, little bit about indigenous uh, history so that's basically it for me for now. So, so moving on. <clears throat> so the airport commission, where are we at? Result of the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2020 budget be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor with Tony, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion. Councillor uh, Delorier and then Councillor Morio. So again, they're, they're going for 2020 with the 50-50 split, even though that's contrary to what our existing agreement says? Is that, that's, I guess, that's what it says. I guess that's what I'm to believe. I, I, I guess uh, Councillor Tony may be able to uh, answer, or Councillor White. I'll defer to the chair. You moved it. Sorry, a little slow on the mute there. Um, yes, again, that was what the um, commission wanted. Um, it was the commission's um, um, push, I guess, so to speak. It will come to the um, G G5 meeting that we have, um, of, and of course it was initiated by uh, municipality of Swan Valley West, um, who apologized for not having it done or not having information come to councils ahead of time. Um, but once again, it was the those members sitting around the table that um, 
wanted to go this route. It's, it's unfortunate, and I, I recognize the, the two that want to speak, but it's unfortunate that uh, the commission or the committee uh, is discussing um, what all councils will discuss as far as what the levies will look like. And, and the committee itself does not negotiate or discuss what the levies look like. Councilor Morio and then Councilor Gray. Just wait, start over. There we go. Um, just echoing what Council Gloria um, said, I was my concern too. Like, I have no issue with the budget itself. It, it's how the levies are calculated, which we made it clear last year that that's not in the agreement and that the commission doesn't have the authority to uh, set how the, uh, the rates are uh, calculated that's uh, set out in the agreement with the municipalities um, also looking farther down in our agenda and stuff like that but uh, looking at some other the stuff um, knowing that it's this as councilman Tony as chair of the commission uh, stated that it's a push by Swan Valley West I noticed that uh, they also have not paid their 2019 fees which um, is shocking um but uh i just want to make it clear that that's not the agreement that we've uh, how we fund it that's based on a recently signed agreement with the participating municipalities and i thought we made it clear last time that the commission has no authority to set how those uh, fees are right they create a budget and the agreement that uh has been signed by the participating municipalities decides and has determined how those uh, that budget is divvied up amongst the municipalities. So um, I don't know where to go with this. Like I have no issue with the budget. It's just the, the, the issue with uh, how the fee is levied. Councillor Gray and then Councillor Delorier and then Councillor Wintoni. There, I'm multitasking here. Okay, um, well, I, I want to join the chorus of people um, that have dealt with this. Uh, where there is an agreement for the process for the determination of the proportionate share of the cost sharing of a uh, joint project, it, it seems to me that fundamentally that's the process that was agreed, that's the amounts that were agreed, and that's how we should go forward. I don't understand how that works differently. There was no, uh, RISE was a little different in the sense there was no uh, agreement. We came to a discussion about it and, and we actually spent, as I said before, almost the first year I was there discussing how that formula should work, what the advantages were, what the reasons were. I don't know if there was that debate at the airport commission. I don't know what the rationale is. Um, there was an already an agreement though so even if that even if that discussion took place, which I, I don't know, even if that occurred, I'm hard pressed to understand how we change the agreement um, in those committees. So I, I'm I'm I, I'm like Councilman Mori in one sense. I don't know where to go. I, I don't want to be harsh, and I don't want to not fund an airport. But what is our authority to simply say, okay, well, we'll pay more, even though we have a signed agreement? Councilor. I don't understand. Um, I, I think I think we do as we did last year. Until the agreement says otherwise, we follow the agreement. We pay what what the agreement would dictate. That, uh, that's on on that point. Uh, one other question on the budget itself. Uh, I see the admin fees um, have stayed the same. How and, and I know the airport commission has uh, a contract with the town of Swan River to to provide that service. Do you know how many years are left in that contract? Like when, when will the airport commission be putting that out for tender, so to speak? Uh, Derek, Mr. Poole? Yeah, I, I believe it's, it's up already. Uh, basically what the town of Swan River needs to do is send a, a formal letter to the commission saying we are gonna stop administering the airport to force the commission to to tender it because the, the commission will continue 
as is as long as the town will provide this service <clears throat> so does the uh the, the agreement that's expired it has a rollover clause like that that just says in, unless either party gives notice the, the agreement just stands or, or how, how are they how are we just providing a service and, and they expecting it to work if there's no rollover clause I you know what I'm I'm not uh, I haven't read the airport uh, agreement in some time so I, I don't know the details of the rollover clause even Terry could probably correct me if I'm wrong if it is actually over or not but uh, I believe it is and it's just going from year to year uh, even without that clause it's just an assumed uh, an assumed continuation of, the, of that agreement so we, we would basically just need to inform the commission that by a certain date we will no longer be administering the airport, forcing the commission to put uh, tenders out. Mr. Crow, I just want to say that uh, Terry and I have discussed this matter a couple of weeks ago now, and uh, we are moving forward with it. I don't know, I can't remember the details of it, but, but uh, we, we are aware that uh, the, uh, the tender needs to go back out. So, yes. Okay. Okay, that was going to be my next comment. Then, subsequent to this, was I, I think our costs are, are higher than what we what we had tendered. I, I, well, I know they are from our last budget. So I, I don't know if you need a council resolution to send the letter, or if administration can do that because it's an expired agreement, or 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 what. But I think we need to, yeah, for sure, send that letter. We'll bring back an appropriate measure within the next couple of weeks. Okay. Okay. Council Wentoni, then Council Gray. Um, so I, I have a few things to go back first to Mr. Morio. Um, the, the Swan Valley West has paid their 2019. It was just received in 2020. So on the financials, um, that's why you see it as a, as a receivable in the 2019 budget, um, but it was, has since been paid. Um, once again, I'm, I, I, I don't want, um, Council to, or I want council to know that I share your views and and um, I understand the agreement, um, but unfortunately I don't have all the votes, so um, that's why the why it is the way it is, and I'm I'm kind of in the position of being the messenger, but I understand your views and I um, I agree with them um, in terms of of the of the agreement being discussed and made as a whole count as a unified valley g5 or g4 rather than just the commission doing it um i had oh and the other note was um in terms of the um administ administering of the airport commission y yes or i'm a hundred percent sure that the um that that agreement is over so the airport commission does need to tender out um but i i we didn't we did not discuss it at the airport commission it was on my notes and i did miss it um but also it'd be great to have something from the town of swan river saying that we will um by this date no longer provide the services for the price that is outlined in the original agreement. I think that we could still do the administration of it, but for a more realistic approach or value that we've determined already. And I think Mr. Poole and Mr. Ganita have those those numbers of what we would tender for um, in an upcoming tender process. I have one more note, but I don't can't read what I wrote, so I think that's it. Well, if it comes back to you, uh, Councilor Gray. I only have one question about the budget, <coughs> although um, there's some wonky things, I think, but the, the, there's a ca another capital asset this year, which is the fuel card lock system. And I don't have any objection necessarily, um, except that um, that appears as an expenditure, not as a capital asset. And I can't remember the agreement exactly, but my recollection is that it was not particularly strong on what happens or how that gets divided. Um, am I, it, if something happens in terms of the airport commission, in terms of uh, uh, participation or ownership, am I missing something, or um, is there a reason that that's a shown as an operational expense, not a capital expense? 
Uh, I, Mr. Ganita. I'm not, sorry, I, I need to defer that one to Mr. Ganita if he can help us out with that answer. Uh, the agreement says that the costs of operating, maintaining, and improving the airport shall be borne by the parties here too, based on the latest equalized assessment of each municipality. And so I guess it's up to, and, and subject to interpretation, whether improving denotes the capital. In, in my opinion, it does, but someone may not agree. Okay. okay. Does that answer that, Councillor Gray? Well, it answers it, but it means that the budget's, for lack of a better word, wrong, just as the runway pieces, except for the maintenance piece, uh, or the repairs and maintenance piece, but the upgrade piece, which is why we had a $50,000 jump last year, those are capitalized expenses, and, and, and there may or may not be something. And, and certainly in that agreement, when we go to reconsider it, we should consider how that gets played out that is how we even if we agree that operationally there are different expenses that doesn't necessarily mean the capitalization should be um on some different formula so i just draw that to everyone's attention that capital should be done differently than than because we wouldn't necessarily in our own budget budget for a capital item as part of an operating expense in fact we wouldn't do that and so it's a little unusual as mr gini even noted right so I, I guess then with that, um, we're going to have a lot of discussion at our next G4 uh, meeting uh, in regards to this and, and many other things. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Um, just just in regards to um, going back to the administration of, of the airport commission, the resolution that was made in 2012 um, does not provide a date. It just says, um, Resolve that the quotation from the Swan Town of Swan River for administrative and ex and executive services for the amount of eighteen thousand dollars annually be be annually as per Schedule A attached be approved. So there's no dates of beginning and there's no dates on end. Um, so to, for the commission, we it would be in the town's best interest to provide a letter indicating that they don't that we don't want to or that we need an inc increase in the in the um, dollar value and then mr mr ganita anything to add with the budget in terms of councillor gray's question well uh, the the budget is done in the same way as municipalities where uh, capital expenditures are included uh, now that's not in accordance with public sector accounting standards which is why in the municipalities uh, financial statements there's a schedule that converts the budget prepared in accordance with the municipal act to the public sector accounting standards budget so the airport commission budget is done in the same way that the municipalities do their budgets where capital items are shown as expenditures Okay. Councillor White? What we could do is not approve this budget based on the principle of 50%, 50%, which I don't believe our council agrees on, and say we can't make a change of that latitude without permission of the G5 as a whole because we're all signatories to that entity. It's, a, it's changed. The commission has agreed it, but that commission is just in my mind, just giving it back to council for approval. So okay. if we don't like that process, we don't have to. We don't have to approve the budget. Con uh, Mr. Crow, uh, the resolution is actually just to receive the budget, not to approve. just to receive the budget. That's right. Okay. Okay. So if there's no further questions, comments, then to the question. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, where are we here? Eight point, where am I here? 8.1. Ooh, this is a long one. Resolve that all property owners in the town of Swan River who own any structures that are encroaching on town-owned property on or before May the 2nd, 2020, 
must notify the town. What's the matter? Uh, it's not on the, our agenda. Not I'm not sure where we're at. Sure. Hit refresh. Yeah. Hit your refresh button, guys. Where's the refresh Gals. Yeah, that's 8.1, but you got 8 to do yet. Oh, never mind. I see. Okay, I'll wait for you to refresh, okay? When did that go on the agenda? It was this afternoon. This afternoon? Well, I just called this, okay. Okay, so I'll, uh, where the heck was I here now? I'm back on here, I'll read it again. 8.1. Result, resolve that all property owners in the town of Swan River who own any structure or structures that are encroaching on town owned property on or before May 2nd, 2020 must notify the town manager by July the 7th, 2020 and sign an agreement with the town of Swan River in order to continue encroaching on town property with the existing structures. And further that the agreement will include, among other provisions, a stipulation that if deemed appropriate at any time that the Town of Swan River, giving 30 days notice, may order the encroaching property owner to have all encroaching structures removed and that the encroaching property owner also cause the town owned property to be restored to an acceptable state similar to the surroundings. And further, that prior to the sale of the property whom owner has structures that are encroaching on town property, that the owner shall ensure all encroaching structures are permanently removed and that the town owned property is restored to an acceptable state similar to the surroundings and further, that no unauthorized encroachments to town owned property will be permitted after May 2nd, 2020 and also that proof may be required to show that encroaching structures predate May 2nd, 2020. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. Councillor Delorier. Um, I, I, I see it, it says here that people have to come to the town by July 2nd. Some people may not even know. So I, I, I guess will, will we have an advertisement? Oh, okay. Yes, we, we planned on advertising this if it passes tonight. Uh, so that everyone in town should properly know that uh, that they need to contact us. So uh, what we're concerned about is a flurry of building and people saying that it was on before May 2nd, so we gave them a month's leeway. So. Okay. Further discussion? Well. Councillor Gray? Where did the date of May 2nd come from? I think that came from when we got um, uh, information from our legal advice. Yes. And that was discussion, I think, at another meeting. What well, was in the 12th meeting? It was the first meeting we discussed it. That's why I'm asking. Sorry? The first meeting we discussed it was May 12th. Uh, mm. No, it was prior to that. It was back in April, actually. April 14th. Then? Let me check. Further discussion? Oh. All in favor? Um, okay. Councillor Gray, did you, I can let you go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm also concerned that we there are a, a finite number of people. I, I don't understand why we wouldn't advise them that there's an encroachment and advise them that they have to, that we're asking them to sign this agreement. I, I don't understand. I mean, obviously, I think we should do a general advertisement as well because there may be people that we that are encroaching that we don't know about or we haven't identified. But for the people that we've identified, why wouldn't we advise them directly? We can do that. Yeah, Mr. Kroll said that that was the intention. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, I missed it then. Yeah, no, there, go ahead. We already have a map of the town and uh, uh, between uh, the public works and the uh, administration, I think we've determined most everyone who has encroachment. So I think we know who has encroached largely, but we do have to have that fail safe in there that there's certain properties we may not see the back of in quite a while and they have, are building or could have built something there. So it's really asking them to, you know, come forward really, but the ones that we know of, we can, we can notify. 
Right. Okay. So, so the, my, the resolution does say that we're going to contact them? Because I missed it if it did. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. It does not say that, but we can do that, yes. Okay. It doesn't so with say that, that in the, I'm fine. That, but that was administration was going to follow through in that way. Okay. So with that understanding, then I'm fine. Okay. Um, Deputy Mayor Wintoni and then Councillor Delore. Um, so just just so that I'm clear and, and this is involves existing properties that have agreements, is this correct? Yes, it's, it's all properties that have encroachments on town owned property. Uh, whether they're under agreement or not, they're going to have to come into a new agreement that's being drafted at this moment by the town lawyer. Okay, that that that's okay, or that I understand that. Um, so when we look at if we could just use Ross Street for example, those those ones who do have full encroachments on it, who have planted shrubs and built structures, etc., they're they're going to have to enter. Or they'll see this or get a letter. Are we as council have we decided if that property? if we're going to allow the sale of that property and will those homeowners know that when when this letter goes out we we can notify them accordingly yes we we haven't dis, we have discussed the, the fine points of of what the letter was going to say but uh, the administration uh is under the you know we we do have the knowledge that we we are going to be notifying people we like I said, we've already got a map that's actually drawn out with where we know where most of these properties are and, uh, and we are going to be notifying them. So we can notify, notify them accordingly, um, you know, of, of what could happen if they don't come into the agreement or if they, if they end up selling the property and stuff. So, yeah. uh, okay, so this, this agreement will, will allow them to to the continued use of it um but but then knowing that it that they only have a 30 days notice for some of the structures is it going to be possible for them i'm sure that they're going to be wanting to ask the question well let me buy the the green space or public property has has there been any discussion if the answer is going to be yes to those uh, any well I can maybe answer that to a certain degree um, anybody has the opportunity to buy any uh, public reserve there's a process that we're all aware of and what that process looks like and the application and, and the funds that have to be paid for it uh, council can ag agree to sell public reserve but the municipal board can also overturn that decision so that's a, a, a tough answer for council to actually answer at this point in time Mr. Crow? The 30-day notice uh, clause that's noted in the resolution uh, is more to do with the need that the public works may come, come across where they actually need that piece of property for some town purpose. It, it's not going to be a, an arbitrary uh, decision by the administration and I imagine, I don't want to speak for council, but I doubt it would be an arbitrary one on their part as well. It's really, a, uh, if, if the town needs it for town purposes, then then we would give 30 days notice. It's, it's, we're not gonna be running around town saying we got 30 days to get rid of it. Yeah, so. Okay, uh, Councillor Delorier and then Councillor Gray. Um, just on, on the properties we know of, will we, we will be contacting them by letter or by telephone? By, by le uh, well, in discussions with, with Derek, we didn't say which way. We, okay. we just, we knew that we had to contact people, so yeah. Okay. I, I, both would probably be good. Sure. Um, I guess my, my next question was uh, um, uh, go on to somebody else for a second. Councilor Gray. Yeah. Um, so uh, I just want to talk. I, I wasn't, I don't think it's necessary, but it was raised by Councilor Wintoni, so I think we need to talk about it, particularly, for instance, on the Ross Street. Um, properties uh, because it seems to me that if we're going to allow the sale it has to be all or nothing I mean just try and imagine if we have those uh, what is there 12 properties or 14 properties something like that and three of them decide to buy it so we have this checkerboard of 
a, a strip of 75 feet or somebody owns it and then three more lot where no one does and then one more that i mean that just can't be and so i i think just in terms of our preparation um it, it's it's sort of every, on that particular stretch particularly it's every it's all or none on other areas like the park i can't imagine that we're going to agree to anybody that legion park is for everyone so how, why would anyone get a right to encroach on it so that's my view i would agree councillor deloria i remembered what i was going to ask okay on the uh uh agreement where we're going to where the encroachment will not survive a, a sale Will that be registered against the t the property? Like, I guess, how will we know? Like, how will that get activated? Uh, we've already we've already talked to the town lawyer, and uh, and um, all agreements would have to be attached to the property. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Councillor Gray. And, and and I take it that that's at the expense of the homeowner. Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. Councillor Gray, do you have another question? No, no. Oh, did I leave my hand up? I'm sorry. No, oh, that's fine. Just checking. All right. Further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 9.1. Oh, this flops around here. <clears throat> Result of the Northwest Regional Library 2020 budget be, re be accepted as received. Moved by... Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor White. Questions or comments, Councillor Delorier? I guess I just wanted to uh, make everyone aware this is a uh, similar b budget as, as I had indicated would be coming forward. The only thing that uh, has changed, we've added a line in there for uh, union negotiations because the library is since uni unionized. Um, and that we will, the uh, over the past five or seven years, uh, we, the library has accumulated quite a large surplus. Uh, so we will be using our surplus money this year just because uh, both councils had been notified of what, it, what, what, to, what to budget and this came after the fact. In future years that, that will be you know, uh, considered just a regular ongoing operating expense. Not, not that that number will come up every year, but it will come up every three or four years. Okay, Councillor Morio. Um, under the, it says the 2020 proposed, there's a 5% increase. Um, is that increase taken into account, um, be what, two months that the library's been shut down, so there'd be a savings of wages there, or is this? Well, there, there actually wasn't a savings of wages. Um, not to go too far into the weeds, but uh, because right basically almost a week or two before COVID happened, the, the, uh, the certification was, was, uh, was applied for. And normally, you know, if you have an agreement, layoffs are easy. The agreement spells out how to do it. If you don't, if you're not unionized, layoffs are as per labor standards. Once they've applied for certification, but before you have an agreement, it's tricky to, trickier to lay off. We weren't. We have to apply to the labor board. We got the uh, approval from the labor board to to uh, cons after consideration about uh, not long before. So there there was no layoffs, like not uh, days before uh, the library reopened. Okay. Thanks. Further discussion. All in favor. Opposed. Carry 9.2. Result of the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2019, be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <coughs> 9.3, result of the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2020 levy in the amount of $35,686 be approved for payment, moved by Councilor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion, Councilor Delorier. Oh, um, I guess 
I, I guess I would ask the mover and seconder to, if we can amend it to uh, pay as per what the agreement says we should pay. Uh, that would be, I, I, otherwise I'm not in favor of this, this resolution unless, uh, unless it's amended to reflect what the agreement says. And I, I, guess I would support that amendment. The mover? If, if that's the wishes of council, I, I support it. Mr. Kroll, could we clarify with Terry what that number was? Mr. Ganita, could you clarify what that amount is, uh, should look like? It was on the last page of their budget. Yeah. Should be uh, 29211. 29211? No. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Is that the whole amount? That half of it? Councilor Gray? I, I'm sorry, isn't that only half of it? Mr. Gadita? Uh, that is the whole amount in uh, using the Form, formula that the commission approved was uh, 35686 using, using the formula that's in the agreement is 29,211. Oh yes, okay, I see it now. Okay. I'm Councilor sorry. Laurier. Um, I guess when I was reading the agenda earlier, there was a nice letter attached to it. I, I think we should also send a letter with our, with our check just stating Stating our, re our reasons, you know, rather than just stitching them. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite, uh, reread the resolution. Result of the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2020 levy in the amount of $29,211 be approved for payment. The mover was Councillor Wintoni and it was seconded by Councillor Friesen. Could you refresh? Refresh? Do I need to? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll re sorry, I'll reread this. Resolve that the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2020 levy in the amount of 29211 be approved for payment in line with the current Airport Commission agreement. Moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni and seconded by Councilor Friesen. Is there further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that the 2020 Northwest Regional Li Library levy in the amount of 93566 and 34 cents be approved for payment once the audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2019 have been received. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. The result of the Town of Swan River request funding from the Manitoba Water Services Board for an environmental approval study for the Lagoon Upgrade, upgrade Project, total project amount being $120,000. Moved by Councillor uh, Morio, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. So I guess a uh, question to administration. This. Uh this is the first step in the process. The environmental study gets done, and then we have to hire an engineering firm to actually engineer what the upgrade is going to look like? That, that yeah, that's, that's correct. The environmental study gives us our, our limitations uh, uh, for our discharges, and then we can go into uh, uh, pre-design after that. Go so how, how how long is it good for like the numbers they come up with because I assume as time goes on uh, restrictions get tighter is there you know is, is this good for two years or do we have to act on it within a year well what does that look like 
Uh, I would say typically, like that. That's a that's a tough one to answer, but uh, in my experience, I would say this would be good for for five or six years. I don't think uh, there'd be too many drastic changes within five years, but uh, like you know, you you just you just never know what uh, what regulations are going to change. Yeah, there's no guarantees. No, I do sit on the the board board of directors for the Manitoba Water and Wastewater Association, so I'm I am up to speed on on uh, or climate and conservation's uh, changing regulations quite regularly. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, Council Morio. Um, I would assume that once we have this study done and know what kind of plan we're going forward, uh, we would be putting forward um, grant applications to the federal government and the province under those federal infrastructure grants to get that ball rolling. Um, sooner than later, correct? Yeah, absolutely. This would be a feather in our cap for, for any grant moving forward. <clears throat> All right, for the discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 9.6. Resolve that the mayor be approved to sign an agreement with People First Human Resources for the amount of $4,000 plus tax to complete a CO annual review. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Councilor Morio, you have a question? Uh, not a question, but a more of a statement just to let. This is not an annual cost that we're looking at. I would assume this is more, um, since this is our first time, we're doing a very formal uh, descriptive review. Uh, learning forward, we'll have the templates and that where we can go forward and do this on our own um, without having to engage the uh, outside organization. That's correct. Whose phone, okay. went, whose phone went off? Someone's getting a, a fine for that. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 9.7. Resolve the town of Swan River support the application by Bill Gade for the operation of a retail cannabis business at 513 515 Main Street in Swan River. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> whereas the town of Swan River's 2020 financial plan included a $2,500 contribution to the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce for the annual trade show in Thompson. And whereas the trade show has been canceled due to COVID-19 and the chamber has requested that $887.50 be redirected to its project to reface the exterior of the tourism building in Swan River. Therefore, be it resolved, the town of Swan River authorized payment of $887.50 to the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce to assist with the exterior renovations of the tourism building. Moved by... Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 9.9, oh, sorry, that's not what I know. 9.91. <clears throat> Resolve the Town of Swan River, bylaw number 12, 2020, being a bylaw to establish a reserve fund for the replacement of rental tables and chairs be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Uh, for clarification, is this the uh, table and chairs that we normally rent out, or is it also this including uh, tables and stuff like that from uh, the Legion Hall? Is it both or just a... It's all. It's all. All? Okay. Okay. Further discussion? Councillor Delorier? We don't rent the tables from the hall. 
No, but I think that what Councillor Gray is saying that if we need to replace tables from the hall, then we would use some of those funds. That's what I think was. But it specifically says rental tables and chairs. Okay, Councillor Gray, do you have any comment on that or? Well, I, 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 I suppose we rent them when we rent the hall. So I, uh, yeah. included. Touche, Councillor Gray, touche. <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Oh, I see. This this is the item that we had discussed earlier. So this is the <clears throat> I got the two mixed up, and I I do apologize. The bylaw enforcement on health orders that the letter that we had come from Minister Squires in relate. Well, you, you can read the, the, the letter. And my question was to administration is what were we doing on acting on this letter from the, from the minister? Not like something that we had to act on, but then Mr. Kroll, you were um, commenting on that. So maybe we can go back to that again. Oh yeah. Um, so in discussion with other CIOs throughout the province, uh, uh, it, it, turns out that most uh, municipalities, including uh, Dauphin, Dauphin's already made a resolution that uh, they will not be um, enforcing the health order as per se. Um, and uh, it's, our, it's the administration's um, thought that it, it's not the best interest of the town to enforce something that is officially a uh, provincial mandate, a provincial uh, responsibility that's where you get hung. That's where you end up spending hundred grand a year on things that town should have. To. Right. So then, does that mean that we need a resolution at our next meeting then to to do uh, uh, to no, we, to that? Or we we weren't uh, we weren't ordered to act on it. So I mean, it's either you pick it up or you don't pick it up. Really. Okay. Yeah. Is there any discussion or anybody else have any points on that? Okay. We'll move on. Nine eleven. <clears throat> Resolved that the updated 2020 fee schedule be approved as attached. Moved by Councillor Lantoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Delorier and then Councillor Gray. So is the, o the only thing that's changed in here is what's highlighted in red, correct? Uh, that's correct. There's two items. Councilor so there's the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you can finish. Uh, there is the public reserve closure and lands transfer. Uh, that's a relatively new new uh, fee that was added to the fee schedule uh, pretty recently. Uh, we just know that when, when somebody applies for this and say that it, uh, it doesn't pass or for whatever reason is ended, uh, the fee schedule states that they will be refunded, but uh, we do spend considerable amount of time on it. So uh, I am asking for a non-refundable amount of $500 uh, when an application is sent in. Councillor uh, Gray. Councillor Gray. Okay, well, there, there are, are um, two things for me. Uh, the first is that the application fee should not include the land price, which should be distinct. That is that before we start, we should say, this is how much we're charging you for the land. That the remainder um, should be an application fee or whatever there is. So the fee should cover our lawyer's fees, the surveyor's fees, any other fees that are required, which might include an application to the um, planning district. I, I don't know if it does. It depends on the circumstance, I suppose. Uh, and the cost that we incur, that's what the fee should cover. The land price should be whatever we are charging for the land, which should be separately determined, shouldn't it? I'm, yeah, I'm not I, sure why. Sorry, go ahead. The two, the two, no, that's fine. I, 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 the, two don't seem, the two to me seem distinct. The value of the land is the value of the land. And the value of the, the cost of services is the cost of the services. So if it's $4,000 plus the cost of the land, that's what it is. Well, I agree. We can we can change that uh, uh, immediately if we, I don't know how we change the resolution or, or however, but that's that's correct. We should remove the land price from uh, public reserve closure fee. Right. The second point I have 
is, um, and this is, everyone will know, this is near and dear to my heart, which is the um, handy tran, the tran fee. One of the things that's missing is within the town of Swan River for a contributing resident outside of ours. I, at least I don't see it. Maybe it's there and I just don't see it. It says outside of town Swan River limits contributing resident. It says outside of town Swan River non-contributing resident on those times, but it doesn't say inside the town of Swan River, does it? Within town. So, very first one. Yeah, it's only Monday to Friday, eight to five. Yeah, that's one of That's the only within town. Within town. Right. Yeah. So what's his question? Well, he's missing a weekend fee for in town contributing. He has it for for in for both both in town, in town and, and contributing and non contributing. Mm -hmm. are both missing as far as i can see but maybe i'm missing something i am prepared to concede well, that it's possible the reason the reason for that is this fee was made up uh well, as, as we're about to see later on in the agenda uh the how we were going to fill the handy van uh transit person or employee has been has been constantly changing over the past few weeks so at at this point in time when this fee was made uh we had a, a proposal that included a certain amount of hours to provide that service so we can add you're correct that i'll have to add uh, outside hours in town and outside of town well why don't we just um uh why don't we just change the third and fourth boxes to say whether it's outside of town or outside just take that well i oh, know we can't i guess <coughs> But it just seems to me that it should be t like we, we talked about before 10 bucks and if you're inside of town it's 10 bucks and for again for non-contributing residents um then it should be more in town um because it should cover the entire cost then again actually looking at my what we have proposed for this position and patty correct me if i'm wrong uh we do have it and we'll, we'll get to this later in the agenda but we do have it based on a 30 hour week so we didn't really separate that this person's working from eight till five. It's uh, it's kind of as the schedule goes. So there there really is no outside of hours. So what I can do is take away that eight a.m. to five p.m. and it'll just strictly be within the town of Swan River limit limits uh, contributing resident and within the town of Swan River limits non-contributing and so on. Just taking away the hours. Well, that's a reduction, so I'm happy personally, but I'm not sure that given our economy, we should do it. But that's right, it's fine for the time being. We, we should, you know, whatever. I just want to make sure that we're not changing the policy, saying that there's not going to be, um, when we get through COVID, that we're not going to get into a situation where we don't have the ability to have people transported after hours. Deborah Merrill with Tony. There was, I see what was all highlighted in red. Also, there was one more change under custom grass cutting that I see that it was increased as well. Um, so noting that change was not in red and all the other changes, um, I think that I second seconded this. Um, I would move to table this until we get till we get to the last or to the other point that Mr. Poole is getting at and then we can revisit it at the next council meeting. Yeah, the, the custom grass cutting was was set to 120 the last uh, in January when this fee schedule, the previous fee schedule was passed. I just didn't take out the 115 uh, on the on the final uh, draft. But yeah, I do realize that I did have this fee schedule up quite some time ago on the agenda, and since then the the hours and the the details for the handy van position has changed. So. Uh, I guess what I can do, or if council would like to table this B schedule, uh, we can wait till the next meeting when we're when we're very sure what that position is going to entail. I move to table it. Okay, so move to table. Do we need a seconder for that? Yeah. I'll second it. Second by Councillor Morial, and a vote. Okay, all in favor of uh, tabling? It's carried. So it'll be. Uh, uh, table to the next our next meeting. Okay, nine twelve. Resolved that the town of Swan River accept the submitted tender bid 
tender bid from CB, CNB, Sterling Enterprises in the amount of $203,150 for the Swan River Asphalt Pavement 2020 construction work. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All Councilor Morio. Uh, Mr. Poole, just looking at your summary there, um, it says project five twice. Is that just a typo or is that related to a similar project? Uh, that is a similar project. That is the, the pavement and the curb and gutter for the south side of Main Street is project five. It's just two separate prices for the, for the bid. Okay, so we're only replacing the curb and gutter on one side of the street or need to? uh no we 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 will be replacing the curb and gutter for both sides of the street it it, it can be it can be lessened uh but that'll be determined by myself okay so is it so is it the south curb and gutter or is it the whole curb and gutter on their project day? project number five is the south curb and gutter and the the area of pavement required to install that curb and gutter okay so are we doing any curb and gutter on the north side of the street yes that is project number two okay it's a little it's a little vague in our descriptions apologize i got i follow you now further discussion all in favor Opposed? It's carried. 913. Result of the town of Swan River hire two part time or casual municipal services workers. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Questions, Councilor Delorier? What is a municipal services worker? So, in order to I guess keep uh, keep a wide range of of responsibilities and duties. Uh, we didn't want to create a position of just handy van driver. We want we wanted to create a position that that uh, several people can do handy van bylaw animal control, uh, all of that stuff. So that's the reason for the uh, municipal services worker name. But. Uh, this replaces the two full-time workers and one part-time employee that we had uh, previously. Uh, two of those employees were contracted, but uh, what we are proposing is a, a casual position for the for the handy van. It it will focus on the handy van up to thirty hours a week. Uh, the hours will be be dependent on the need, so it's going to start off slow and, and increase with time. But uh, our clerks uh, will do the scheduling. The employee will receive. The next day's schedule at the end of the day, uh, uh, and they can they can obviously cover for bylaw animal control during breaks in handy van trips, and uh, we will have to or they will receive fifty dollars a month for, uh, for a cell phone allowance. The other position is a part time position which will focus on on bylaw and animal control, uh, possibly crime watch in the future. Uh, we're estimating around twenty hours a week. Uh, this is a, a we're going to try and schedule four hours a day Monday to Friday. Uh, cell phone will be provided. Uh, we are we are in talks with the union right now so that he can receive uh, an amount per week to cover on call time uh, and any time over twenty hours per week. Obviously, overnights are not required, but uh, he can be called out uh, for emergency situations and will be paid a, a call out rate. Thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, Gray. Two questions. One is, are the positions I take it are contained within the existing budget? Yes. And s secondly, is a salary scale or is that uh, a, a set or is that to be agreed with the union? Uh, we do have one set for the time being. Uh, we have informed the union that it will be a part of the negotiation because that's what we've agreed to. So we've told the candidates that uh, their salary is subject to change. 
Okay. So should the resolution provide that salary resolu- salary range or that salary scale in it? Uh, sure. That would tie our hands in negotiations, but uh, well, it's being I, hired. I, honest, for now. I, I did. It is being hired for now, but if like in the case that we negotiate a higher wage, we would have some back pay. Uh, That's fine. And, uh, yeah. And, Mr. Crow, uh, we, if you wanted to set a number, we could set a number of uh, an upset limit of. Eighty-five thousand for the next year, I think it was. As Terry has that slotted, that that much set aside for those two part-time positions, including other things. But right. that's what it's for. So, Councilor Gray, if the amount for me, and I, I won't speak for the other six, obviously, but for me, if the amount is already contained within the budget, that satisfied that question. But I just think that the approval should be for a um, whatever salary scale is already in the i presume there's a, an existing union agreement scale that's going to be used and so whatever that scale is should be included and if it is, has to be amended later it has to be amended later that's what we're approving mr Crow. a position on a certain scale uh part, part of the uh part of the reason that we went with the uh, municipal services worker was uh, we were trying to break the description and the title of the worker away from uh, the current names that are in place or names of the type, titles of the positions that are in place in the agreement because these, these two workers are fundamentally different than, uh, say, the public works operators and we didn't want to artificially tie them into the public works operators wage scale which could possibly be higher okay. than what uh, a handyman driver or a, or a part-time bylaw officer might get so. fair enough so what what is the scale that we're proposing what hourly i mean there's got to be a scale that we're proposing it was, Nine, go ahead. well that's a, a number but there's got to be a, isn't there a scale We've, we've calculated it out with uh, with Terry that 1950 at the 50 hours would be well within the uh, budget limit that he set. I know what I know what you're asking, Councilor Gray. There's there's currently still no employee scales uh, uh, that have been that have been set. That that work hasn't been done. Okay, so for me, Your Worship, um, I, I'm always uncomfortable just approving things without it being fairly specific in terms of this is what we're approving, this is the scale of the position. So um, I take it 1950 is the is sort of the mid range. Do you want to answer that? Uh, the, the 1950 is the starting wage for both uh, employees. So, so that's, the bo- that's the bottom of the scale that we're proposing? Well, that's that's clearly where the union is going to start from. Yeah. Yes, I think that some of this discussion now is we're kind of coming into uh, bordering uh, items that should be actually discussed in camera. So I think I agree. I'm any, sorry. Any further discussion? If council wants to leave this discussion for council uh, to camera, then we'll we'll defer it, and then we'll come out of camera and vote on it at that time. Perfect. Okay. So then we will uh, leave this for now till after we come out of camera. <clears throat> okay, 10.1. Whereas the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2019 budget requested a municipal contribution of $33,316 from the town of Swan River. And whereas town council decided at its meeting held September 3rd, 2019 to contribute 27000 557, leaving an unpaid amount of 5,759. Result, the town contribute the remaining portion of the 2019 municipal levy, $5,759 to the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission. Moved by Councilor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? Court of vote, please. Uh, Councilor Morio. Uh, I agree with Councilor Delory, a recorded vote, and then just uh, reiterating my concern that uh, we have a standing agreement with our 
municipalities and we paid our fees according to the agreement um so i will not be supporting this uh increase in levy uh that was arbitrarily um made by the airport commission and not agreed to by the uh, signed agreement uh, partners at the time the agreement was made less than two years ago okay further discussion okay all in favor opposed it's defeated i need, I need to know what the uh, against the councillor or i mean for councillor Lantoni and councillor friesen the rest were opposed. Eleven one. Resolved that accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number twenty six one ninety eight to number twenty six two thirty three for a total of forty seven thousand six hundred eighty nine and twenty five cents. Payroll accounts checks number forty six seventy to number forty six seventy five for a total of ninety four thousand. Three hundred and twelve and eighty-nine cents. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion. Councillor Morio. Uh, check number two six two one three to Texas Refinery Corp. Um, it says penetrating spray, uh, spray and a TRC release. What is that? I have not to put you on the spot, Mr. Ganita, but do you want to take a stab at that? I'll defer to Mr. Poole, please. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Derek, I'll, uh, Derek, what do you buy? What's TRC release? <laughs> uh, I will have to get back to you on that one, to be honest. I, I'm guessing it's it's an it's an oil that our mechanics have purchased, but uh, I would have to get back to you on the details. Okay, thank you. I know I know this has come up in our invoices previously. I know that the Texas Refinery Court. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. So you'll get back to all council uh, with an explanation. Yes. Resolved that pursuant to sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act Council going to committee and close the meeting to the public. We have communications from the Arma Mountain, land sale, uh, tourism, employee hiring, uh, employee relations, as well as the, um, uh, the other discussion about pay scales. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We're in Canada. Okay. Uh, result of the town of Swan River hire two part time or casual municipal service workers, moved by Councillor Dwayne or Councillor White, and seconded by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? Carried. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.